Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. We're uh, ready for another devotional, I'm, and uh, I've been uh, looking at John uh, 14 for a while. Uh, preached on it Sunday morning. Um, wanted to come back to it. This is where Jesus claims uh, the title for himself. He is the truth. Uh, in four, chapter 14, uh, verse uh, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so we want to look at that again in just a couple more uh, parts uh, that, about that I wanted to unpackage for us. But before we do that, let's bow our heads together. Father, I pray for the day that you give us today, that you would give us uh, blessings from your throne of grace, that we might have good days, healthy days, that the people of Chapel Hill would be protected, our families protected, our loved ones protected in your grace. And Father, also the people of this city and this county would be protected because your church is praying. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so John chapter 14, um, Jesus talks about the truth. And, uh, and uh, you know, watching the sermon this past week, it's, it's nice to be able to, and you know, one of the nice things about this kind of a sermon is, is you can pause it if you want to, or you can catch up by reading you know, kind of studying. If I mention a text or something, you can kind of look it up and, and pause it and those kind of things and do the, do all of that. Um, you can also fast forward if I get boring on a particular moment. You, you know, I, I know a lot of you are hitting the fast forward button a lot. I, I don't appreciate that, but you're going to do what you're going to do, so whatever. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, the truth that we're going to look at, uh, there is a, there is a permanence, and, and this is you know, this is, maybe this is interpretive. Um, this is the way I understand what Jesus says about truth. There is a permanence to the truth that does not decay. Um, societies start; they re, they get to a pinnacle, and they start to crumble. All throughout history, um, it's been a repetitive thing uh, where we have empires that just kind of uh, begin. They get to a pinnacle, and then they they fall away. And each of these cultures, each of these these um, civilizations, each of these soci societies develop and, and mold and morph uh, their own versions of truth. And sometimes those truths line up with the eternal truth of God, and sometimes they don't. And, and I think that when they don't line up and, and societies uh, fall under this deception of false realities, uh, eventually, they, they, they topple, they crumble, that kind of thing. And so I don't get really upset when modern, uh, the modern opinions of our, of our day today challenge the truths that have been uh, around for thousands of years. Uh, we start to say, well, that's an old, outdated concept. And, and the most cynical of us, we look at the scriptures and we say it's a, it's a human document. It comes out of their civilization. It comes out of their culture. So why should our culture listen, listen to their culture and be subject to it? Um, and there are some cultural things in the scriptures. I, I get it. There are some cultural th things in scripture that just are historic reflections of the people of the time. But there are also truths in the scripture that are eternal that are um, that show and reflect not only the nature of the culture of the time they show and reflect the, the nature of, uh, of our Creator of God his holiness his truth his uh, his responding to sin what he, how he feels about sin I think he feels the same way about sin today as he ever felt about sin throughout of all, all of history because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Change, God changes not. It's the immutability of, of God, the unchangeableness of God. And so I think sometimes as a culture we forget that there is no deterioration to certain truths in the scripture. And I think the frustrating, you know, I, I, I'll admit that there, it's frustrating to try to, try to you know, decipher, okay, that truth is a truth for that culture in that time, but this truth is a, a truth that reflects the culture of God. And that's what we, but that's our task as we come to the scriptures. We, our task is to deserve, discern the scriptures. And Paul says to Tim, Timothy, we need to, we need to rightly divide the word of truth. And <clears throat> we do that with the help of the Holy Spirit. I believe the person who approaches God's words humbly, uh, with humility, and with a prayer that says, God, show me the truth. Uh, I don't believe God will let that person go far astray. I think that there is, since we're all fallible, we all make mistakes, 
And so we're all going to argue and debate over different issues in the church. Um, and so, but I believe God's going to guide the person who sincerely seeks, uh, seeks truth. Uh, because uh, when, we, when we try to, uh, and, and I think sometimes, I, I guess what I'd have to say, people seem to be insincere uh, in their handling of truth and mishandling of truth. Um, there are people, and it's hard for me to admit this, it's hard for me to come to this, but there are people who will come to the scriptures and they will manipulate the scriptures uh, to fit what they're wanting the scriptures to say. Um, I, and I, my hope is that it's a sincere mistake rather than a manipulation uh, toward evil. I can't imagine a person, and I guess it, ha it happens, a person going to the scripture and saying, I'm going to take advantage of this, uh, the power of this, that, that this Bible has on people's lives, and I'm going to manipulate it to my ends. To me, that's the most cynical of all people who comes to the Word of God and manipulates it so that he or she gets out of it what they want out of it. Um, that's a person who just has no belief that there's any <clears throat> divine origin to the Word of God. Or either that, or they have no fear of the ramifications of manipulating the Word of God. It's just a scary thing. So, uh, truth does not decay. Uh, we, can, we can veer off as a society. We can veer off of the truth, but truth will still, still go on the direction it's going. Uh, society goes its way. Truth goes its way. And I think that it's our, we need to do the best we can to go the way of truth, to follow the truth. And, and again, I think the source of truth is in the Scriptures, where all else uh, seems unstable, where all other foundations seem to crumble, the foundation of God's truth is the thing that I hang my hat on. That's where I, I throw my full weight onto the Word of God and trust in His, in His truth and trust in Jesus, the truth. So um, I, I guess my encouragement today is to continue to read. I, I, I'm hoping that you're saturating yourself with the Word of God because this society is going to do what society does. But my encouragement to you as my brother or sister in Christ, as a person who has Jesus Christ in your heart, my encouragement and challenge to you is, while well, when society veers off, stay in the Word, stay fresh in the Word, stay daily in the Word, so that you will not be led astray by what the world calls truth, uh, and if it veers off of God's truth. So let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us, and I pray that your blessing would be upon us as we continue to... I hope and I pray daily, stay in your word uh, so that we might be saturated with your truth. And, and, I, and Father, to see uh, when, when society veers off, to see that we uh, stay with your truth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless Chapel Hill. You have a great day. We'll see you soon.